pretty sure I'm gonna use this one for mini making. But shh, don't tell anybody. Call this the upper decker. Wow, the tire's <laughs> eating the fender. I may not be the only one that came prepared. All right, everybody, this is a bonus episode I decided to throw together for y'all. I caught wind of a motorcycle rally slash mini bike race drag strip kind of thing. And I saw that they were racing full size motorcycles on dirt. So I did, I'm, I'm gonna see if they're gonna let me enter this thing in. Uh, but I got a few things I need to do to it first. Uh, probably gonna swap a bigger valve cylinder head on it. I was thinking about changing the gearing, but the drag strip might not be that long, but we'll get into that later. But uh, let's see, let's see what we got to do to get this cylinder head off. As you guys can see, this thing is equipped with a Tillerson 212, but it's got quite a bit of extra spice to it. It's rocking a Fire 265 cam billet rod. Uh, definitely already worked cylinder head from our good buddy. Uh, and let's see, billet flywheel, 24 flat slide with a custom intake to get it out of my leg path so I don't keep knocking the carburetor off or anything like that. But um, yeah, so I'm going to start by removing the carburetor, the exhaust, probably pulling a few things, odds and ends off of it, getting a few things out the way. But um, yeah, let's get this cylinder head off. So I'm going to start things off by removing the exhaust and then go for the, uh, the carburetor manifold or the intake manifold. Like I pointed out on the the other side. A little trick I learned, especially when running the, uh, the the Makuni adapter from Go Power Sports, is it's a little bit of a tight fit to get the Allen wrench in here. So what I like to do is I take a five mil Allen wrench and cut down the elbow to make it easier to fit in here. And even with a custom intake like this, the back bolt, it's easier to get the wrench in. So. Let's see. I'll get it. All right. Look at that. I didn't even tear my gasket. Sweet. Right, so maybe we can maybe we can zip tie this out of the way. But for now, that's out. That's off. All right. Now I'm going to remove the valve cover. Same deal. I've, I put the 5 mil Go Power Sports intake bolts because we had a bunch laying around, but you can use any of them, any, any hardware you need that's, as long as it's long enough because I, uh, I have a valve cover spacer for the, uh, <laughs> I think these are 1.2 or 1.3 ratio rockers, you know, for a little extra spice. I'm going to show you all a little tech tip on how to remove exhaust studs and it's probably best that we go ahead and remove them while the cylinder head is bolted to the engine and the bike so you can use that to keep the cylinder head still so you don't have to try and clamp it in a vise or something crazy. But you take both half inch or 13 millimeter nuts and you tighten them up against each other. Basically you run the top one down and the bottom one up and they basically jam, it's kind of uses a jam nut or a, like, I, I'm not really sure of the technical term, but it ba they basically become one, they become a unit. And then you can kind of put a deep socket on there if they're locked together or you put your wrench on the bottom one and you can actually break the stud loose. Now if, it, if they start to spin, it means you didn't get them tight enough to begin with and you, you have, uh, you, you need to start over. Now be careful because you can mess up your threads. So use caution. But definitely, de you definitely need to make sure you get it tight enough. And always, always pull from the bottom one when trying to back it out. And 
And look at that. All right. Now, I will tell you this. Ah, all right. So, I will tell you this. These studs have been out before. So, they may have been they may have been a little easier to get out than most, but that's pretty much how you take care of that problem. And then before it's all the way threaded out, go ahead and break the two loose, but make sure you have the stud still threaded in, probably three or four threads cuz you don't want to don't want to pull on that don't want to pull on it with it only threaded in once or twice because you don't want to damage those. All right, so let's get these head bolts broken loose. may need to uh, before I do that I need to remove the uh, the ratio rockers because I'm gonna have the same dilemma I'm gonna need the head fixed so I can break these loose so let's figure out what size it is look at that All right huh they weren't that tight wonder if that was a problem they were tight enough they didn't go nowhere you're gonna be able to reach them oh dear <laughs> but don't do that oh gosh there's the risers for the ratio rockers that I dropped in there but they didn't go down in the motor I can get them whoop got the top ones and the bottom ones and they are the exact same length so can't get them mixed up, but you can keep them in the same spot if you really want to. All right, so let's see if we can get this. Oh, wow, it came off a lot easier than I thought. All righty. Not bad. All right, so first huge noticeable difference between the cylinder heads that I'm, uh, the cylinder head that I'm installing and the one that I just pulled off is that I think the valves are roughly the same size this this one I, I don't I don't know I, I don't feel like pulling them out to check but the uh, the deck height on this see how there's like a lip here it's smooth over here so definitely some more compression on this one so this is uh, definitely a definitely a cool upgrade for sure and the, uh, the valve springs are dual like heavy duty valve springs with, I think, chromoly caps. Same thing with this, chromoly caps, but definitely had some weaker valve springs in this one. All right, so I've got my two dowel pins down here reinstalled, the new head gasket. Um, I think this thing is calling for like 065, like a 65 thousandths head gasket. I don't know if I have that one, so we're just gonna go with the uh, old faithful fire ring thick gasket just because I could tell with the ratio rockers and the deck height being gone these valves are going to come very close to that piston and it is a dish piston with a valve relief for the exhaust side so we should be okay but uh, I will roll the engine over once it's bolted all up and torqued to spec just to be sure um, and what I'm talking about is when the piston comes up and the valves are either opening and closing you really don't want these edges to put eyebrows on the piston because that would mean a bent valve and bent valve is leaked down and that leak down is not good, loss of compression. So definitely don't want that. So let's see if I can wiggle this thing in here. Oh, I had it. Why this is being difficult is because I'm doing it on the bike and I haven't removed all of the heat shields and stuff. All right, so I'm going to double check the uh, the torque specs on the head bolts. Go ahead and reinstall those. Uh, get the exhaust studs 
and the ratio rockers put back in and then my valve cover gaskets. Other than that, it's uh, pretty much good to go. The head bolt torque spec is, according to Tillerson, is 37 Newton meters, which is 27 foot pounds. And then in inch pounds, it's 324 inch pounds. So be sure to make sure you're not mixing that up because you don't want to do 324 foot pounds. It'd be bad. <laughs> So let's get a socket set up for this thing. It was a, I think it was a 12 millimeter. Go around in a circular pattern and double check it. And just like that, the cylinder head is torqued to spec. For real this time. Now that the head's torqued to spec and I've got the rockers in place and they're not, they're not, a, they're not perfect, but they're they're finger loose the way that it was when I took the valve cover off. I'm just trying to check valve clearance, so I'm gonna expose the. Uh, Gotta put that on backwards. I'm gonna I'm gonna expose the flywheel and roll it over by hand. So let's see. So here's the exhaust. I'd say intake somewhere right there is gonna be top dead center. Yeah, I think it's. Well, we could put a screwdriver. Yeah, in somewhere. Plug hole. Somewhere right in there, but we'll we'll double check that, of course. But um, yeah, I didn't hear it didn't bind up, didn't hear anything, so good to go. I think I wish we had a thin head gasket now. Oh well, that's all right. Now now that we've verified our valve clearance, we're gonna set the valve lash. We're looking and for three thousandths. Looking for three thousandths. And you grab your your four mil Allen and a twelve point three eight for your jam nut. So I'm going to tighten the set screw up with the Allen wrench until there's a good amount of resistance on my feeler gauge. See how I can't pull it out now? So more than likely that's less than three thousandths. And there's a good amount of pinch on there. So you hold the set screw still and you tighten and you go against the wrench and you tighten up the jam nut on top. Like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, something about gear change. Uh, we found out the drag strip is more than likely going to be pretty short. So there's no sense in going because this is the gear that was on it. And then I was going to put the stock gear for an MB200. But I decided to put my old 60 tooth that I ordered years ago from Go Power Sports, and it's still in great shape. It's just a little dirty. Don't worry about that. But let me get this chain cut and uh, get the tension set on it. I think we're good for a rip. What do you say? Sweet. All right. And this is by far hands hands down <laughs> the best chain break we got. There you go. And yes, I am putting a used chain on here because I don't. I, we have all brand new chain that I can put on here, but I might be doing a gear swap. So I left my old chain alone for this gear, and this chain might get cut down for this one because I'm pretty sure I'm going to use this one for Mini Mayhem. But shh, don't tell anybody. I think I had a 40 chain on here before, or is it? Oh, this this is a 40 chain. Okay, so the four, so this is why, because a 420 link is not as wide as a 40. That's the difference right there. Bummer. Oh well, I'll go see if I got a 40 link somewhere. And there you go, just like that, with the right, with the right master link, everything good, everything is good. And just a reminder, I think we've said it before, but can't say it enough. The way that the chain is rolling, like the tire you want the closed part of the lock facing the way that the chain is rolling. So if there's anything to catch, it doesn't catch the teeth and pop it off. There's always a safety glasses moment. All right, good to go. And this is what you call, I guess, a 
pre-used, pre-stretched, but not like the good kind that go, not the good DID chain. <laughs> not that good pre-stretched. Extra stretch. This is extra stretch. Don't have your bike five feet in the air on a husky jack. Nothing wrong with husky, but it's what I'm doing. At least strap it down or put it on the ground. Here we go. Yeah. All right. Dirt hogs all buttoned up. Let's get it down and uh, I guess we're going to try to mark out about 100 feet and try to keep the front wheel on the ground. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. There's a big rear, there's a big rear gear. Big right rear oh God. Oh, oh, oh. Sorry buddy. It's okay. You okay? It's a dirt hog man. She can handle it. it. Yeah, I don't know if that's going to work. Oh, hey, how's it going? Is it is it right that I caught wind that you guys are going to a, a smoke out bike rally this weekend? Cause I I was up there, the old lady kicked me out. I've been staying at the shop for a while. You guys probably had to know that's the Chuck Chuck Mist. But uh I'd seen that rear sprocket you got on that bike. You better let me show you how to do a wheelie or preparation for a wheelie. So before we get started, I'm gonna show you guys how to prep for a massive wheelie with a massive sprocket. See the seat that I'm sitting on? Just throw that out. You're gonna to wanna to get up here, call this the upper decker in preparation for the massive wheelie, and you just go max wrist. Max wrist. It's all in the wrist. It's all in the wrist. The neck and the rest, the rest is history. Or you'll be history. You ready? Yeah. All right, so let's see what this thing will do. A little bit of throttle. Decker. Is that the legendary upper decker? Oh, well, don't do that. Excellent form on your upper decker. Yeah, that was, it was a hundred foot burnout. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> and it was so scary because I felt, I felt, <laughs> I felt like a hood ornament. <laughs> oh boy. But I tell you what, here, let me get this, let me get this brain bucket off. Oh boy. Charles, I thought Chuck was riding that whole time. I got a haircut. It, it took my wig right off. It was so fast. But uh, no, this I'm I'm very pleased with this. Now it might not be, it might not be a speed demon for like what we're used to at Busco Beach for the eighth mile and stuff like that. But being that we're only racing probably 100, maybe 150 feet, this thing's a missile. You ought to give it a try. Can I give it a try? Yeah. Sweet. Just watch, watch first and second gear. All right. Thanks, bud. <laughs> Oh, yeah, he definitely wants to get used to that one for sure. Got to fully commit. Oh, John, you okay? I'm fine. Are you okay? I am totally fine. <laughs> the bike's fine. Don't worry about it, dude. I just stood there. I'm so sorry. No, don't don't apologize. Are you okay? No, dude. I like I literally just stood there and it just went goodbye. It's fine. All right, so I owe you a. Uh, what? Uh, no, no, that's factory grip. Don't worry about it. What broke? What broke? Everything. Oh, look at the fender. <laughs> the tire's eating the fender. It got hungry. 
I'm oh, so sorry. Lord. No, no, dude. Uh, we just talked about how bad that fender was. So yeah. No, no, you're good. Hey, are All you right. skinned up? Any, any, any? No, dude. I literally okay. didn't even get touched. Yeah. Hey, look, look at that. It's like I meant dude, to. Dude, the it. Go Power Sports grips can take a hit and keep on getting. Well, look should I that. just ride it and it'll fix itself because it's rotating? Yeah, yeah. Wait, Either no, rotate it. it more. Yeah, rotate it backwards or something. And it'll it'll be fine. There you go. Look at that body work. <laughs> there we go. You got the you got gardening gloves on, so just give her. Give her a yeah, I'm so sorry, dude. Bro. No, no, don't, don't apologize. That's okay. <laughs> you want, you want to trade? You push yeah, my yeah. tug. Here, I'll, let me get one of the gloves on, and I'll, cause I, I, I usually have to do this out in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> so what you're saying is, she's got a little bit of kick. Yeah, it's got some kick. That's hey, you good. know what? Uh, look, this is all that matters. Oh, the handlebars are a little crooked. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, well, no. we'll fix them. I don't know how that happened. Golly. Dude, that took she a took hit. a tumble. That took a hit. Yes. Yay. Yeah, I'll get... And I'll put a pole on the handlebars and stuff. And guys, look, be be nice to John in the comments. He really didn't mean to do that. And I know it's my personal bike, but it's just parts. It's all good. Oh. Bouncing all over the place. See the, the advantage of a rear swing arm? Yeah, the handlebars are not great. Ah, we'll fix it. Sorry. We'll make, look, if we can't get them back the way they were, we'll just make them evenly bent. Yeah. So we're good. Don't worry about it. A lot of wheelies, man. This thing's a yeah. riot. Riot. Yeah. Dev I'm definitely gonna have to bring another gear just to, just to make sure I don't I didn't bring too much. Yeah. But it's fun, man. The oh, seat yeah. is also super broken. You nah. want to sit on it? It's okay. Don't worry about it, man. Well, I gotta take it anyway. <laughs> Dude, these handlebars are, <laughs> these are bad. <laughs> Old dirt hog just took another leg. Well, you know it's bad when it when it lifts the chrome off when you bend the pipe. That was there before. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and kinked over here too. Oh, <laughs> that was definitely there before. It's all right. What was oh, it? they're bad. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how. I don't know how we're gonna fix that. <laughs> they are really bad. Yeah. All right. Um. It's all right. Um. Dang, go. Jeez. Do we have any other uh, cool handlebars? Where you fix it? I think I got Something it. Something happened. I think I bent it a little bit. Oh, dear. Hold on. Here, let me help you. There we go. Hey. That's actually pretty even <laughs> for after what just happened. <laughs> Check that thing out. Oh, that not is. Bad. Then, then we gonna mount a GoPro on here. <laughs> Bingo. A nice stabby stick. No, that's not bad, dude. I told you not to worry about it. What were you stressing? <laughs> <laughs> don't, hey, look, and don't, really don't feel bad because I think these are Ike's handlebars. <laughs> <laughs> it's fixed. Kinda. Kinda. We're gonna go into Ike's junkyard to get some new handlebars, and I just ordered Charles a seat, so. Yeah. So it's, it's fixed. It's all good. <laughs> I, I really, I, I was more worried about John. I guess, I guess I, uh, my, the dad in me is, uh, you know, are you okay? All right. Don't worry about the bike. Just load it up. So. Yeah. It was still running when it was on the ground. So what's, what's the, yeah, no problem. All right. So let's see. Okay. They're not perfect. But I'll take it. Well, we're ready for drag racing. Yeah, and look, both arms are a little bit bent. 
before we had a straight arm and a bent arm. <laughs> that was the big difference between the handle. So yeah, it's it's kind of hard to get the two, these two exactly even after that much of a whack. So all good. We'll just we'll just hang it up and we'll, it'll be a little memory. Oh man, I'm glad you're okay. Oh, you want to crank it up real quick? Oh yeah, let's see. Don't do that without a helmet. All right, ready for the drag strip. Yep, ready for the drag strip. <laughs> we'll see you there. We'll see you there. All right, so we're here at the uh, the Smokeout drag racing. We got the uh, the mini bike. It should be fun. There's a lot of fast looking bikes. There's no telling what's going to happen. I may not be the only one that came prepared. <laughs> bikes were allowed to race the full-size bikes I guess it was just too dangerous uh, but they had no idea I was as fast as them they didn't even let me run it but uh, 
it was really fun all in all got to run some pretty cool bikes and uh yeah we'll we'll see if i can get get one last race in hopefully but i, I doubt it they're getting pretty serious out here calculator and it didn't work out. Well, gear, I did the gearing calculator on my hand and it didn't work out. All right. Turns out I can't count. Turns out I can't count. So, turns out I learned my lesson. If I, when I was doing my gearing calculator on my hand, uh, I made it too violent of a launch and it was almost unable to, unable to control. So, learn my lesson at the drag strip. Turns out the fastest guy was the only one that really wanted to race me. So, I embarrassed myself with this, but I brought I brought the uh, the real fast bike, and you know I had to let them know what's up. So, but yeah, maybe I shouldn't have geared it so violent of a launch, and I almost killed my buddy, Floater. Sorry, Floater. They don't know Floater yet. Oh yeah, they that's don't. not oh, a yeah. video. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll catch y'all next time. Start back. <laughs>